Hello, this is Emily, the Crunchy Coach, and today, the last day of June 2013, I am going to give you a garden update, which I have not given you, I don't think, since last April. And there's a reason for that. The reason is because we've been in a drought for two years, and the wild rats in our neighborhood had decided to go insane. They were getting thirsty, so they decided to start eating up all my green tomatoes, my green peppers, and my cucumbers, and I got really frustrated, and I just basically destroyed my garden. It was before this time last year. It was early June, I think. I did not plan to have a garden this year, and this is why. The reason is that um, I didn't know whether we were going to be moving up to our property in southeast Oklahoma this spring or next spring. Turns out it's going to be next spring. But I decided just to relax. If if had I grown anything, I would have had. We would have had to build a. A cage take the time money and effort to build a cage around our garden and since I knew we were moving and I'm gonna have a really a much bigger garden in Oklahoma I decided just to blow it off and relax this summer however I did end up with some surprises first of all last year I had some red Malabar spinach growing I think it was in this area here and no it was over here actually and we've covered it up with rocks landscaping fabric and rocks but some of the red Malabar spinach seeded. There you go. And so now it's going to grow up our little post here. <laughs> It'll climb right up there. And it's good in limited quantities in green smoothies and salads. You don't want to eat a whole bunch at once. It's not that great. But it's um, it'll grow in the heat of the Texas summer. It doesn't mind sun. It doesn't mind a little drought. And it grows in the heat. And here's a bunch more that has has seeded and I'm not sure how big that's going to get because we do need to keep this part mowed. We did decide not to use this as um, as a garden anymore. We're just going to let it turn out to lawn. Um, we've had a whole bunch of strawberries. See those strawberries down there? Those strawberry plants came out of these pots. There's a pot, okay? <laughs> they sprung out, rooted. We have several. It's hard. We've got all these weeds in the way. It's hard to see, but we have several strawberry plants that volunteer themselves in the garden. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get some pots ready with moist soil, dig out all my extra strawberries, and put them in a pot, and we will take them to Oklahoma next year. Now, these are New Zealand spinach that I saved from that area that we just looked at that we're turning back into lawn. And this already has some weed growing in it, but that's okay. It's uh, what is it called wood sorrel, I think. But New Zealand spinach is even better than red Malabar. It's a little bit tastier. The texture is nicer. But it's another New Zealand spinach um, is a nice lettuce alternative for the hot summer. This is a pepper that I, I salvaged from the garden last year. I was trying to salvage the Swiss chard next to it. And um, I had to, it was like, you know, Let's see, I'll try to get my fingers in that. It was like that tall, this this pepper plant. So I put it in a pot, put it under some lights, some artificial light upstairs, and it just kept growing and growing. And it used to have some pepper, and I think I think somebody's been eating all of my baby. Well, there's a pepper. It did have more blossoms. I think maybe somebody's eating the green. Oh, there's another pepper down there. All right. We do have the wild rats discovering seeds. See how these eaten right off the stem. They've discovered our berries. So now they're eating the blackberries and the strawberries and everything they can find. But that's fine because when we're in Oklahoma we won't have these nasty rats around and we're going to be building a huge cage that will keep all the critters out of our garden. Look at how the fig has done. I didn't know you're supposed to cut down the fig to the base <laughs> every uh, at the beginning of every winter. So that's what I'm going to be doing from now on so they don't get this tall. But the, it has started growing at least a couple of figs, but it's, it had the, the foliage has become very prolific. Um, the apples, now see what's happened is I, I don't, I've decided I don't care about growing any fruit until we get to Oklahoma. So I just shoved everything in a corner, and this corner is really dark until about April. So I haven't got any fruit off of these, and that's okay. We'll just put them in the ground when we get to Oklahoma. And whoop, looks like I might have a caterpillar or something eating. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> all right, we're gonna move along over here. I'm actually gonna walk all the way to the 
end of the garden and start back the other side because the sun is facing me and that's annoying. But remember, folks, that I have not planted anything. Okay, recently we're, we're turning this area also back into lawn. There's some drip irrigation tubing. I need to dig up from under the grass and get that out. But I had, as you can see, this is dead lettuce that went to seed. I had probably three harvests of lettuce just would come up, reseed, grow. I wasn't even planting them. So it may even try to grow there, even if I take off the drip irrigation tube, it may try to. Now, talking about red malabar spinach, I also had a pot of red malabar spinach last year. Tons of seeds. Look at all these red malabar spinach. Going. Now, here's some... I planted this clover, it's just to get the bees and stuff, but there's lots of red malabar spinach growing along this fence, and we'll see, I'm not planning on watering this, so we'll see how long it lasts. I think it gets some water from my neighbor on the other side of the fence. I think her sprinklers may water this area a little bit. Now, as you can see, look, most of this, most of these berries have been eaten away by birds or rats or something, which is really sad. And, but here's some. These are blackberry plants. But look how they've gone nuts. Okay, this one is from... So this plant here volunteered over there in the garden bed, and now it's wanting to volunteer some more. See, what I'm going to do is cut that off and grow it in the ground, and it'll root. Also, this here. <laughs> cut that off, put it... Or not in the ground, in a pot, and it'll root. Um, so here's raspberries. It's a raspberry pot. I don't, don't want my shadow there. It's another raspberry. It's a blueberry. Looks like something's been getting the blueberries too. Probably birds. So the cage we're going to build, it'll keep out deer, birds, rats. I won't necessarily keep out gophers. I don't think gophers are a problem in southeast Oklahoma, though, up in the hill. So anyway, so I'm not stressing about the loss of all these berries this year because I know next year, from now on, we'll have tons. These are raspberries or blackberries. I think raspberries, I'm not sure, but they volunteered actually like the first year. They just sprouted themselves right next to the house. And because we water the foundation, because this is North Texas and you have to, or the expansion of the clay will destroy the foundation of your house, so you have to keep it moist. Well, these are getting watered too, so they're growing quite nicely, going, trying to go into the pre peach tree. You see that? Now, that's the next thing, the peach trees have lost all their peaches this year because teeny tiny pots, <laughs> even though they're mini dwarf, the pots are just weighted. They're 20 gallon pots. They need to be in 40 gallon pots if they're going to be in pots. They're going to be in the ground in Oklahoma. So I'm not worried about it. We'll put them in the ground and they'll, they'll be happy. They'll bear much bigger fruit and their fruit won't all fall off. But I want you to take a look. Remember, I did not plant anything this spring in these beds. But I am going to keep these beds for the people who buy this house. Maybe plant some flowers in the next spring. Something that doesn't require watering. Sorry, got to <laughs> move through the blackberry. Um, this is a Swiss chard that, that overwintered and has grown very tall and gone to seed. But the leaves are still... Uh, there's actually two plants that survived. Um, the, the leaves are still good. They're much better. They're much sweeter than the leaves you buy in the store, even though they're going to seed. Um, tarragon gone crazy. I'm going to take this tarragon out. Because I've got that one over there, which need, I need to prune it like every week. It goes nuts. <laughs> Folks, if you decide to grow tarragon in your garden, like give it, put it in a pot, okay? <laughs> or give it a place all by itself because it goes nuts. Here's another more blackberry trying to, trying to infringe upon the rest of my garden. Check this out. Lime basil. I did not plant this, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is what happens when you let things go to seed. What is that? That's a big weed. This is a big weed, and I don't want all those seeds going everywhere, so I'm going to pull it out. But most of the rest of it, here's another one. Let's see. Whoops. I'm going to pull out the basil. There we go. Uh-oh, it broke. Ah. It doesn't help if you don't get it by the root. Mm, there we go. Okay. Lime basil and marigolds. I didn't plant these either. These all seeded themselves. See how the basil has already gone to seed? Well, they've gotten flower, which will go to seed. But the marigold and the lime basil, I did plant just a few of each. Just a few of each last year. And because I did not plant anything else in this bed, all the seeds decided to sprout. So I, I got marigolds and lime basil without planting them. 
and this is another got another lime basil, I think. And the petunias. The petunias went to seed. I did not plant these. These are left over from last year. I planted some petunias last year. They went to seed. Volunteered themselves. There's another lime basil. Now, the brassicas here, the kale, the cabbage, the broccoli, all of those I did indeed. I'm going to try to get the other way so the sun's not bothering us. I did plant those last fall. And I just left them there over at, um, during the winter. It did get, at some point it got so cold that they quit growing, and I thought they were all going to die. But then it warmed up in May, and they started growing again. So I've been feeding the cabbage moss. They're happy. But as you can see, there's not a whole lot of damage. Then, so, you know, who knows? This baby is a volunteer from two years ago. I did not have, well, it might have come over last year. But I didn't have tomatoes on the side last year. I have a volunteer tomato growing. So... We'll be feeding the rats some tomatoes, I guess. I'm, I'm going to try and see if I can figure out how to cover this up. If there's a way, maybe I can cover it up so the rats will need them all, but eh, I'm not going to worry about it. The drip irrigation runs, so I'll just water it and see what happens. Got some volunteer barrage. Barrage volunteers like crazy. You need to be careful with barrage, though, because it's much more prickly than thistle. I mean, it, it, it gets all in your fingers, and it hurts. So you need to be very, very careful if you decide to grow barrage for any reason. And here's that huge tarragon I told you about. So, this is what happens if you start a garden, and you just let nature take its course. Even if you decide you're not going to plant anything next year, guess what? Nature's going to provide something. As long as you take care of it with at least a little bit of water. So that's my garden update. I just wanted to share with you what can happen even when you're not planning on gardening. If you've had something there previously, you can still end up with food to eat. <laughs> Alright, well that's it. If this has been a fun video for you, feel free to click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time and in the meantime, take care and be well.